Hi, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. My name is Mark, and I tinker with bikes, and occasionally get to ride them too. In today's video, I'm building up a 94 Cannondale M900 as a bit of a commuter, but it's also an opportunity to talk about the costs behind a build. It's not something us folk making videos often talk about, but it's something I want to be a bit more open about. You've probably seen the bike industry struggling at the moment, with companies going under and others offering crazy sales to stay afloat. The highs of the bike boom are over and the second hand market is flooded with so many bikes. I put this bike together just to sell and long story short, I ended up losing around £100 and to be honest, that's kind of the norm for me. See, I picked this bike up in 2019 for £58. Well, I say bike, I actually just bought the frame. And that's not how you want to do things if you want to see pound signs. The M900 was one of Cannondale's top spec models and it had a beautiful two-tone paint job, a metallic purple and a gloss black fade. It would have really stood out back in the day and I think 30 years later it still looks amazing although a little scratched. I started off by giving the frame a good wipe down with some muck off before going over the whole frame with some tea cut to try and remove any fine scratches, then some auto glint polish to try and bring out the shine and finally some ceramic spray to seal everything in. It's kind of the normal treatment for a frame and works really well at rejuvenating the paint for the build. With the frame looking a bit better and the range stopped, I can continue with this build. Long term subscribers may actually remember I used this frame once in a single speed build, so that's why it already has the headset fitted. Being an early Cannondale, it uses a one and a quarter inch head tube, so I fitted a headset reducer from Mr. Control and then a Ritchie one and one eighth inch headset at a cost of only $15.99 quite cheap actually as I think those reducers are a lot more than that normally. As I'm building this bike as a commuter I'm sticking with the tried and tested style of rigid fork, BMX stem and motor style bars. A sort of Gary's project influence. I actually find this a really comfortable combo for a 90s mountain bike commuter. Threadless rigid forks are surprisingly hard to find and this one ended up costing me £30 with stem adding another £13 and the bars a further £22. Fitting was straightforward, I wanted to leave a bit of height adjustment on the steerer so instead of cutting it down I used a 20mm spacer above and below the stem. The bars give a little bit of rise but this just allows something extra for the next owner. It looks like I'm moving on to the controls now and with the backing track stopped you've just got the ambient garage sounds now. I was trying to keep some of the cost down on this build so for the drivetrain I'm using my old 10 speed setup from my CX bike but I needed a flat bar shifter to suit. I ended up buying this SRAM X5 shifter brand new for £20. It seemed like a decent price for something new and reliable but maybe there were better options out there in the second hand market. For the brakes I'm actually going new again with a set of Clark's V brakes but even brand new this is only £21 for a whole setup. Calipers, pads, levers and cables. The whole deal is included. They're great for a budget build and seem to work fairly well. In true GMBN style, 
I'm finishing the bars off with something I got for free. The grips. I know, bit cheaty right, if I'm trying to show up bill cost, so let's just call them £10. Always grease up the posts if you're mounting cantilever, V-brake or U-brakes. You don't want those guys sticking on the posts. I just use some normal, multi-purpose grease. It doesn't have to be anything special. The brakes went on fairly easily, but I did have to trim down the bolts on the rear. They were just a little bit too long to fit snugly against the calipers. I also find these budget V-brakes have a habit of locking in place if the bolt is done up too tight. So if that happens, just back the bolt off a little bit. And now it's time for the drivetrain, and I'm about to pull another GMBN card. It's not quite the hundreds of pounds worth of wheels given for free from a sponsor, but I did essentially get these wheels and tyres for free from other builds. The front wheel I had left over from my old Proflex 752, and with a bolted front axle suited this build perfectly. The rear wheel came from another Cannondale that you haven't actually seen yet, so I can't really call that wheel free, but it's definitely spare. And the tyres came from another Cannondale, the F700, I bought a couple of years back just for the wheels. So yeah, it's a bit of a grey area for those bits, but they're all looking free according to my budgets for those builds. Anyway, the drivetrain is a 10-speed SRAM GX setup with a Zito 11-42 tooth cassette. I bought all this brand new and used it on my CX bike for a while, so I'm just going to give you the prices I paid back then. In 2018, the derailleur cost me £45, the chain £14 and the cassette £18. They have all seen a bit of mileage, but the chain is still showing low wear, so it should be good to use here. Technically speaking too, the cassette is just outside the limits of the derailleur on paper, but I can confirm it does work. Just. Now this was the stubborn part on this bike, the bottom bracket. I'm going to say this is probably the original bottom bracket by how much it put up a fight. I needed to change it because it felt like it had a slight bit of play in the axle and I picked up a cheap 24mm modern crank set off eBay for £15 and the new bottom bracket to match for £9. Honestly at one point I didn't think it was going to get the bottom bracket out. My impact gun didn't seem to move it at all, so I had to break out the big guns with a scaffolding tube, and thankfully, I felt it break loose. It was still extremely difficult to turn though, and once it came out, I saw how much corrosion had been holding that BB in. Honestly, it didn't look too good, but I cleaned it up and ran my die through the threads, and surprisingly, it looked good. clean. I 
Of course, after all that fighting and cleaning, I made sure the bottom bracket was thoroughly greased up. Hopefully that new bottom bracket won't be seizing in there anytime soon. That literally works like two minutes ago. And of course, after a bit of playing with the indexing and aligning the brakes, the build is complete. Well, it needed a rack to finish it off. The rack That's is a basil jump. that I modified slightly to fit. I actually only paid £27 for that rack and £3 for the cargo net, so they were a bit of a bargain. The build was technically finished off with a 27.2mm seat post that I managed to get for £3 and a saddle I had left over once again from another build and now that I've got to the end of the build it may not have been the best example of costs because I use so many free parts but it hopefully gives an insight into things the total build cost for me was £324.90p but that doesn't account for time, polishing materials, tools etc I actually ended up selling the bike for £250 to an awesome local chap who needed it for commuting. After fees, that left me with £217.70, so really, I lost just over £100 putting this bike together. Even after scrounging from other builds and finding some bargains, this frame-up build put me in the red, and it's not uncommon for me. Maybe it's a sign of the times, or maybe it's my location, or marketing. But bike builds aren't selling and that's why I'm doing less of them. I wanted to make this video to give a bit more of an honest look at a build and I'm going to continue sharing the costs in future builds. This isn't meant to put you off building a bike but it should serve as a warning that if you're thinking of flipping bikes keep an eye on your build costs and check the market. I love how this bike turned out and even with the loss, I think it went for a reasonable price. The bike looks great, works well, and the new owner rode away happy with some free parts. I hope you enjoyed this build. If you've got any advice to share for others, drop it down in the comments. We need to keep these old bikes alive. Thanks for watching, ride safe, and I'll see you in the next one.